that single one mistake will make your session unfun for you and all of your players. Hey, hey people, it's been a while. Today I wanna to talk about some tips to avoid burnout as a dungeon master. I myself am actually coming back from an eight month break. What led up to it was I felt overwhelmed, like my sessions were never good enough. Prepping went from very exciting to a drag. All of these things accumulated into me losing my passion for D&D and taking almost a year off. And now that I'm back playing D&D again, I had time to think about what led up to it and I wanted to share my advice that I've developed from that with you guys. My first piece of advice, especially if you're new, is starting conservatively. In all three of my campaigns, I made the same mistake. I tried to develop fully complete worlds. I spent too much time up front creating characters with full lives and history. I spent too much time making cities that logistically made sense and had hundreds of years of history and living politics. I spent too much time making gods and just on everything. I tried to make a full, complete, 100% world. And 99% of it, nobody cares about, nobody sees. It also made me feel inflexible. Like if the players wanted something, I'd like have to shift over things. And I felt like a skyscraper that couldn't move. And by no means am I saying that you shouldn't create the fantasy world of your dreams. All I'm saying is it's probably the best idea to start with a town and everything immediately around it and still have a larger world like kind of in concept, but not like written down in paper. Still keep it detailed, but you don't need to make everything at once. A couple square miles is all you're going to need for maybe two, three sessions. This will cost way less time as front. As you play more sessions, you're going to improve as a dungeon master. And as you improve as a dungeon master, you are very likely going to improve in your ability to world build. And sometimes your players in the middle of a session will do or say something that inspires you to think of something you never would have thought of on your own. And that's something I, I, would, I would recommend as well, getting your players involved in world building, whether it is having them make their home towns, having them make up gods, having them just make up anything. Because like, the two brains are more powerful than one. And they often think in different ways than you do. My next piece of advice, and frankly, this is probably the most important, is choosing your players well. I have had many issues in sessions due to me thinking that any group can work. And that's just frankly idealistic and not true. Not all parties are made to work out. Not everybody's made to play D&D together. I've had emotional players. I've had destructive players. I've had hyper goofy players that are just looking for a different kind of D&D than me. That last one's fine. The that's just a perfectly reasonable thing to have. And that should be solved with session zero. A session zero where you go over your expectations and what you're looking for in this game. So my advice for this is if it's your buddy or somebody you met online, if they have a very present negative or disruptive personality trait, think of these two things. How will this affect our game? And is this person able to take feedback? And if that second one is true of anybody, do not include them in your game. That single one mistake will make your session unfun for you and all of your players. And if you have a problem player and you talk to them and there's no change, talk to the rest of the players. And if they all agree that this person is a disruption and a nuisance to the group, then you need to boot them. It's going to be hard. It might even damage your friendship if, this, if you know this person. But you have to decide... Um, is this one person going to going to make the decision that they're going to ruin the fun for everybody else? And are you going to let that happen? If you have a friend that's always interrupting you, like during conversations, that's very disruptive and like always trying to make themselves a sign of attention, that presents a real chance of spoiling your game. They can interrupt people and try. If someone's doing a, a role for trying to convince somebody, they can butt in and be like, "Hey, how are you?" Or if you have a if your friend's a rager, they may flip their lid because they died or took some damage that they felt was unfair. An emotional player may not let an, a rules dispute go and keep it dragging the whole session. A bossy player might try and play other people's characters. None of these are like, none of these situations are fair to the group. You should not strictly eliminate someone from your group just from having a trait. It needs to be disruptive and actually present an issue. You need to stay excited by what you're making. I have 100% been the position of being uninterested and unmotivated by what I'm making. It's bad for you and it's bad for your players. And just an overall terrible feeling. You feel like you're wetting yourself down, you feel like you're letting your players down, and you feel like you're just burning your time. If you find yourself in that situation and you're bored, switch it up. 
take a break from your usual game and play a one shot try a different genre like if you normally play like a sandboxy open worldish kind of game play a murder mystery maybe you can go from traditional fantasy to sci-fi or maybe even try a different system altogether if you're playing 5e maybe try starfinder or pathfinder maybe you can try warhammer fantasy or maybe you can go back to third or fourth edition or if you're just purely looking for some more inspiration read a book and pull inspiration from it and if all that if you don't want to try any of that or all that doesn't work take a couple weeks off i'd rather you take a short break than lose your passion altogether and take a year off if you aren't hyped to prep your next session then you're not going to give it your all if you're half-assing it because you aren't hyped you're going to develop imposter syndrome and feel like it's your the people's time isn't worth what you're doing and you're not going to prove as a dungeon master and reach your full potential i appreciate you guys watching i hope this video is helpful Tell me what you think below. There is a link to a playlist that I'm putting together of other YouTubers making helpful videos that I think you should probably watch. I'll see you next time.